Uh, welcome back to Mix Presents Sound for Film and Television 2021. We're here to uh, talk about emerging technologies and workflows in sound and picture. Uh, certainly, everybody's been trying to figure out a new workflow lately, as we all know. Um, and we often talk about sound for picture. Today, we'd like to talk about sound and picture because you're becoming more intertwined, not necessarily in the skill set, but in the delivery and the distribution all the way to the home where some of these experiences are emerging and you're getting very, very high end playback for the consumer. Tim Boot with Meyer Sound, uh, uh, introduced the panel. Cheryl Ottmitter with Odd House, uh, uh, Atmos facility in Washington, D.C. area. Tim, Tom McAndrew, uh, with Dolby who has certainly been instrumental in outfitting a lot of facilities, answering a lot of questions, providing education. And Rod Lagerlof, a visionary design who has built a lot of immersive rooms uh, and helps not just design and integrate, but helps them sound good because Rod is first and foremost a mixer. So Rod, what, what technologies from an integrator designer's point of view, what, what excites you today? It's, you know, it's all over the map, really, you know, so starting off in the days of running film, as you said, uh, with a, you know, funky print and maybe it's got slug in it because we're still waiting for effects to come in. Um, and, uh, you know, geez, we did so much stuff when I was at Skywalker using the initial version of, of Dolby, um, I forget what it was called, sorry about that, it's, uh, the Dolby interface so that we could record like over ISDN and, and do uh, sessions from north to south. One of the things that I found out very quickly was that it used to be you could work with that kind of a funky work print and you're mixing sound, but then as studios got more and more um, boutique-y, I'll say, you know, people would come in with their, their uh, final DI master and you're mixing sound and they're like, well, why does the picture look like crap? Because the studio doesn't have a great projector or whatever. And then, you know, the same thing happened in DI rooms where you get somebody like Guillermo del Toro working in a DI room and he wants to hear the sound in all its glory and full, you know, bass and just rattling the walls. So the, the technologies have really emerged um, as we've gotten more and more integrated and, uh, you know, the systems are tied together between sound and picture. Cheryl, you put up your, uh, built your first Atmos suite in about 2016 at a time when technology was sort of booming and tons of new technologies were coming out. What, what did you start to look at and how did you develop these streaming technologies? What excites you? Well, I mean, immersive sound excites me, and and right now it's it's one of the most exciting times in my career to be in audio because we're actually pu putting out pat sound Atmos packages that travel and the mix travels from room to room, no matter if you're on a sound bar in your room or if you're, you know, in you know a deluxe uh, Atmos theater. And so I I just think that it's it's a great time to be a creative and you can actually put sound where you want to hear it and you're not tied down to traditional channel-based audio and uh, as more and more people get used to the idea and are developing techniques for binaural and atmos it's just um it's just taking it's just so exciting it's just taking off and it's actually kind of for me the crossroads of atmos music and atmos for post-production or atmos for for picture is like it's cross converging now finally and uh as a mixer I'm, i'll just be happy to get you know not stereo uh cues that i have to put up to seven one or or atmos you know these guys you know these these people are musicians composers are now looking ahead and going oh we can mix in atmos we can mix binaurally and then take it to the stage and open it up and and it's that it's just going to be a beautiful thing it's going to be awesome it's Tom awesome McKenna. now Oh, absolutely. Uh, Tom McAndrew, um, at Dolby, you've been a responsible uh, part of the process of parallel development and sound and picture. I mean, I know regular folks who love going to a Dolby cinema. That's how they will only see a movie now. So these have sort of been hand in hand the last 10 years. Can you talk a little bit about the development? I will, but I'll backtrack a little bit and say, first of all, I'm, I'm really happy to have worked with Cheryl all these years. She and I were baby sound editors way back when in the DC market. And, um, she was, she opened the very first uh, U.S. East Coast, uh, Dolby Atmos home mixing room. 
And uh, we were really proud to partner with her in doing that. And, you know, since then, Atmos Mixing uh, for Home Entertainment uh, has just really taken off over the past several years. Most of the leading uh, streaming services um, are featuring both Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision technologies in their products. And we're, you know, we're excited about where Atmos is going next. It's already made a big splash in music from Tidal to Apple Music. And uh, now we're seeing uh, the podcasting community starting to use the Dolby Atmos uh, production tools. Uh, podcast platforms aren't yet ready to actually stream true Dolby Atmos, but just going on the Atmos Mixing Professionals uh, Facebook group a couple of months ago, I was going down and going, wow, there's all these podcasters who are like, we love the Dolby tools. And so, you know, they're starting to print master in Atmos. And so we're kind of excited about that being the next frontier for Dolby Atmos. Uh, uh, Tim, uh, uh, at Meyer Sound, uh, uh, earlier this year on the mix cover, we featured a a quite impressive project at the develop at Netflix that we'll be talking about in a minute, but it, it involved a key component of uh, Meyer Sound's ultra reflex system, which is certainly a new technology hand in hand with direct view display. Can you give us an overview of how that came about? And then we'll dance into Netflix after that. So Tim. Sure. Yeah. Again, thanks. And again, it's refreshing to have a call or a panel called sound and picture. Um, when I got into it, it was always sound for picture. And it's really nice that they're kind of equals here. Uh, but I, what's interesting about what you're talking about with Ultra Reflex or Meyer Sound is it really was a response to picture and how, you know, the display manufacturers are really getting really exciting visual products out into the marketplace with incredible color and dynamic range and getting into this direct view technology that's not just finding its place in post-production, but of course in residential cinema. And so uh, we saw that as an opportunity to launch a new piece of technology for us that creates you know, exceptional sound for picture, uh, or maybe we should say sound and picture. So yeah, we were, yeah, I'd love to keep diving into what that ultra reflex does, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a response to that amazing technology on the visual and side. Technologies are often you know, leading, but they come before we catch up. People forget that HDTV was a 10 year rollout, you know, from when you first saw it at NAB until you saw it at the homes. Um, Ron, you were there at the, the, the Netflix build of their crystal led lab, uh, and such in conjunction with Sony and, and, and Meyer and Dolby. Um, from start to finish, I mean, tell us. I mean, just, can you start with an overview of uh, of this project and why it's different? Sure. Well, you know, as Tim said, it's, it's uh, really driven by the technology that's um, come around, not only with Sony and the CLED, but also Samsung and LG and some other manufacturers who do large format LED displays and trying to make the sound sound as if it's coming from the screen the way people expect to see that in a large room in a theater you know it's one thing if you've got a 75 or 85 inch tv in front of you and you can put the speakers around it or below it or above it um but it's a whole other thing when you're in a large theater with a 40 foot screen or bigger and the sound really doesn't work well coming from outside the perimeter of the screen so um definitely uh I have to go on record by saying it's really Miles's fault, Miles Rogers. He, he put this together um, and uh, was working on this uh, up at Meyer Sound and uh, he had privately shown it to some, to several interested parties and one of those parties would have been Netflix. And we had already started working on some other projects for Netflix and we got kind of brought along into it. So in the very, very early stages, uh, we were just trying to figure out, well, where are the speakers going to go? How is it going to, you know, work with the room? Um, and, uh, you know, Miles really did the, the heavy lifting on all that. But, you know, we ultimately had to finish a room that, that worked. So in the lab, we did. And it's a smallish room um, with about an 18 foot wide screen, 4K screen. Um, but the next step was, and it worked really well, but the next step was trying to figure out, well, will it scale? Will it go to bigger rooms? Um, it's probably pretty ob obvious that it would work in a smaller room, but um, bouncing the sound off the screen and combining that reflected sound with the low frequency element that has to come from another set of speakers, um, that's critical to get the timing and the phase right. <clears throat> so it really sounds like it's coming 
from the screen. And this really does sound like a virtual image coming from directly behind the screen. And as you move around in the theater, you get that kind of spatial soundstage effect. You can really hear where the center speaker is coming from, the sound from the center speaker is coming from. And off stage, you're hearing it really quite well. If you're on the right side of the theater, you can hear the left speaker quite well and vice versa. So it covers a, quite a broad range um, for the audience. And, uh, you know, we were re recently, we were able to demonstrate the large room to, uh, to some folks from Dolby and uh, they were quite impressed. So I remember, uh, you know, they were I remember in preparing the mix article, one of the first calls I, I said, no, no, wait a minute, you're bouncing sound off the screen, right? You're about, uh, uh, that's sort of the first step that when you get your head around that and you realize what you can do with imaging, I mean, Tim in house in the development of something like that, that's be a lot of back and forth and sort of. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, as Ron mentioned, Miles Rogers, he was really, you know, got us excited about this project. Uh, not the Netflix project in particular, but the concept that, you know, we knew direct view displays were coming. And uh, as Ron mentioned, the, the placing the speakers around the screen to create phantom vertical and horizontal images just wasn't working. You know, phantom center really only works for one place in a listening environment. And um, cinema sound requires localization. You know, dialogue's got to come from the mouth of the per the actor. Um, and so, yeah, it was a really exciting challenge. And it's something our company loves to look at is, is what can we do that hasn't been done before? And, yeah, we spent a few years uh, trying different technologies, different ideas, bouncing different types of loudspeakers. Uh, we tried different types of surfaces, trying to anticipate what kind of screen surfaces there would be. And, uh, you know, tested everything and got to a point where we were able to produce a system that sounds just like, you know, the screen channel, the traditional screen channel where, you know, in this case, you can't fire sound through the screen. And, uh, yeah, it's been really exciting to see. I think the most exciting thing is when you get a content creator to come through and, and not even realize they're listening to a reflected sound off the screen and uh, say, wow, I, I could work with that. I mean, I think that's the ultimate blessing is, hey, I could work with that, you know, because that's really the goal is to create this tool set for content creators to, again, create content that goes to any type of display. I think you hit an important point there, Tim, honestly, that um, this sort of, it's not, it's not a merging of the home, but it's certainly a balancing between the home and theatrical and, or event experience. And Tom McKendra, if you can maybe comment, uh, and then Cheryl will get to you because you mix a lot of program that is meant for the home as well. But Tom, that idea of cinema and home, uh, it's, it's a big deal at Dolby. At Dolby, you see the, the push coming for Dolby at home. Uh, what, what's it like? Well, the whole goal of uh, Dolby Atmos is providing the best, you know, truest creative experience, no matter what the listening environment is. You know, Dolby Atmos, as well as Dolby Vision, uses metadata that hits whatever either the display device or the audio decoder, and it knows the capabilities of the specific room it's playing in. So it knows, okay, there are X number of speakers and I know where they are, so I'm going to present all the audio objects, just not always at the same speakers, but always at the correct point in the space. So that's that's all, always our goal is to deliver the truest great intent. Well, one of the things that I've noticed is also like a lot of advances in technology are designed to free up time for creativity or to inspire creativity, right? Um, Rod, Tom, Tim, what, what do you find coming back from clients, Rod? I mean, do, do you have people walk into these rooms and be stunned and want to work there? I mean, what, what do you find when they encounter new technology? I, just, I find that it's, uh, it's interesting what I hear about new technologies. And, and at first blush, you go, that ain't going to work. Um, you know, people said that about Dolby enabled speakers, you know, at home, which is how we create the illusion of speakers overhead, for example. And now the Meyer system with solid uh, cinema screens and making it sound like sound is coming out of the screen. Um, and you first hear about it and you go, that ain't going to work. And then you hear it. And I have heard the Meyer system and go, son of a, it works. And, you know, it's, I, I think it's a Walt Disney quote. It's kind of exciting to do the impossible. And it's, uh, or it's fun to do the impossible is the quote. Um, and you, you guys are doing the impossible, and it's really fun to see that. Yeah, and I think it's like I, I was gonna—I was gonna mention you know it's—it's it's like when you have someone come through and say I could work here, it doesn't sound like a great compliment, but it really is, you know, because that's—I that's, think it's really what you want to do is you want to get the creatives in a place to do the work. And I, you know, listening to Cheryl talk and and, and you know the places content goes these days is amazing. When I started in the biz, it was like either cinema or television. That was it, and they were defined. You know, stereo television was occasionally stereo mostly mono, 
and cinema was was LTRT and eventually 5.1, which sort of dates me a bit. But, you know, but now to like, you know, to have to take content into themed entertainment, 4D, you know, these are and these are heavily driven by these amazing visual technologies. Uh, but to be able to create rooms, you know, for people like Ron to create rooms where creatives can go in and create content that may go in many different places. Um, so, you know, I think allowing people to have really elegant and simple workflows um, is a challenge, but it's also a lot of fun. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to hear. I haven't heard the, uh, the technology. I can't, I have to go. Where can I go on the East Coast and hear it? Anywhere? It's, it's not, quite, not quite okay. there yet. So Will you let me know? I'll be there. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think also, too, what's so fun is, is that as you, as you grow and you're saying it's all scalable, like, you know, we, we are fighting the phone, right? So, you know, you can play Dolby Atmos now on your phone and, and the spatial capabilities now off, off of that. I, I have to admit, I was cynical, but it's, uh, it's actually quite astounding. So that, that is, 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 is the also the joy of, of mixing in Atmos and, and also c- keeping in mind that it's it's sound and picture, you know, and it's scalable wherever you go. And you'll never, you know, you'll never get away from that. Tom, Tom McKendrew, uh, any final thoughts? You want to spill any secrets from Dolby of what's coming up or anything like that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, to bounce off what Ron said a little bit, um, yeah, technology by itself, it's, you know, it's fun for us, but ultimately everything is in the service of storytelling. And, you know, we want the, the technology to kind of disappear into the story. Um, but, uh, but yeah, if, uh, what's coming up for Dolby, uh, we just dropped, uh, the newest version of the Mastering Suite and Production Suite version 3.7. Uh, it's got a lot of neat new features as well as some under the hood stuff that's going to lay the groundwork for, uh, upcoming updates. So, uh, existing Mastering Suite and Production Suite users, uh, Go ahead and download it now, and uh, we hope you love it. And, and Cheryl, I love that the, uh, this, this technology doesn't exist without the creatives. Uh, you have, you may have a good left brain, right brain interaction, but I know you love to sit in the chair, as you say. Uh, so, yeah. as a mixer, as a mixer, final thoughts on what these technologies bring? Well, I can't wait to actually hear the technology, the re- it reflects technology, so that I can uh, uh, actually start mixing more. Uh, with objects and dialogue. Um, right now, there's, I think that's a big, uh, debating point, uh, for a lot of mixers is to, do you put your dialogue or your, in, in objects? And I always, I almost always do that. And so I can't wait to play around with like, okay, if I put that object there and then it's reflecting and then how, I mean, it's just, it's just all coming full circle and it's going to be even better. So that's my thought. Yeah, I think it gives you a lot more options for that, too, so that you can have that off-screen dialogue and it really sounds natural when somebody comes into frame, things like that. Yeah, because that's a, that's a hard thing when you're creating that, that scene or, or that moment, however you're trying to do it. And, you know, to sell it, um, you know, to mix it right with the current, the way people are, it's it's with, with Dolby Atmos, that was the that was for me the the great step. Like that was like the big leap, you know, like, Hey, now we can actually move that in the sound field exactly the way you want to hear it. You know, whether it's a group of people walking by or, you know, the on-screen uh, dialogue is, is behind you and moving up, you know, it's so much more, it's actually easier to achieve. And so then it's easier to achieve. And then it's, it's easier to hear. So, it's, or not so, easy, not easy, easy for me, but not easy for you. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's close with you. Uh, uh, Meyer Sound sponsored it, but behind Meyer Sound is a man named John Meyer, who is an absolutely brilliant man, uh, and has an affinity for picture as well. John, John Meyer could go on at length about camera lenses. Uh, he, he's got this mind that sort of synthesizes the two notions and has an interest in cinema. I mean, and from that company standpoint, what's, what's exciting you about? What's next? I, I think just sticking on the topic we talked about here with, with sound and picture, it, it's, you know, I think what the display manufacturers and what the display industry's done of kind of putting displays everywhere is a little bit scary, but at the same time, it's a palette. You know, it's a palette that the creative should go and utilize. I mean, we, we've, create, we, we've created content for the traditional screens, but there's a lot of what we call non-traditional screens. There's the hotel lobbies. There's the, there's a, you know, uh, corporate environments. And there's, you know, to Tom's point, there's storytelling opportunities everywhere. 
and you know let's 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 match the sound with this picture technology and and do great storytelling in places we haven't thought of and i think that's exciting for us it's exciting for john meyer it's exciting for meyer sound i hope it's exciting for everybody who's in this industry it's um find the palette and play get with those, it. Get those tools in the hands of the creatives. That's what you yes. want to do, correct? Well, uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. What it all. Thank you to my yourself for sponsoring thank this. You. Thank you to the audience uh, for joining us. And certainly, thank you to our panelists uh, for coming out and lending your expertise. Very exciting time to be in technology. Tim Boot with Meyer, Cheryl Ottenritter with Oddhouse, Tom McAndrew right there at Dolby and Rod Lagerlof. He's going to be building rooms for years and years to come. And, uh, thanks for staying ahead of the curve there, Rod. Yeah. Well, maybe I will, or maybe I'll retire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good night. Thank you.